Hello, welcome to another unboxing. Uh, today I have a Class 25 with DCC sound from Backman. Obviously this is a fairly old model now, um, 2006 tooling and the model code is 32-404DS and this is the Class 25 stroke 3 diesel 25276 and in BR Blue with DCC sound. And I'm quite a fan of uh, Class 25 so I saw this one and I thought I don't have a sound version so it was a, a purchase that I would have wanted to uh, pick up. It's a second hand purchase obviously I don't think you can buy these from new now. So we do have some paperwork from the sale. And this was actually a, a model from 2011, so quite an old model really. So, guarantee, not really worth the paper now, because uh, it's well out of uh, warranty or guarantee. So we have the DCC sound and CV settings. Very useful, and we have exploded diagram. Um, how to fit your DCC sound, but this is already fitted, um, and how to fit your buffer beam parts. So let's have a look. Do we have all the? Uh, oh, we've just got one more piece there, which is the collector's club. No use at all. Very old. So we do have the detailed parts and these are unopened so all the parts are in there so that's quite nice to see and there's also a blanking chip if you uh, ever want to remove the sound. Okay so let's get this slow cover up. And I can see straight away it's not as a uh, vibrant blue as some of the other um, Class 25s that I do have. Most of them I do weather up or have, you know, I've got some factory weathered. Um, this one looks like it has been used quite a bit. So you know, there's a little bit of oil just on the bottom there. But, um, it's possibly used more than some of the other second hand models that I've purchased. So, it's uh, still very nice and looks like all the details still intact, there's nothing actually broken off. Um, all the handrails are there, there's no real, there's no scuff marks on the paint, all the de decals all look in good condition. But we'll also see that on the white background. So let's have a look on the white background next. And there we have the Batman Class 25 up close. And I'm looking at the uh, spec sheets and everything. It says we should have separate fitted handrails, lamp irons, side grills which are etched, which do look etched. So let's uh, get up close. There's some nice detail on the uh, grills on the top there with the handles. The warning signs there. Nice detail on these bogies. You get detail on the fuel gauge there. And you can see the etched grills. Uh, nice crisp numbers there. The uh, builder's plate. Let's zoom in on that. There we go. I can't quite really make that out. But uh, it should come out quite well. It's on the video. And 
And let's have a look at uh, the opposite side. Same level of detail. And it seems to be in reasonable condition for its age. And just to confirm, yes, we do have sprung buffers. It's always nice to see on models. Uh, how useful it is, but it's uh, one of those features that uh, everybody seems to like. Let's have a look at the uh, cab ends. So we've got the non driving uh, driver end at this here. And you can see the separately fitted lamp irons there, and pound brackets I should say, and the separately fitted wipers there. Let's uh, see the opposite end. Let's see if we can see what inside the cab there. There is some detail in there, it's not a great deal. I'll see if I can uh, get that to show up on the camera a bit more. It's very difficult to try and get that to really show up. And there's the driver in there and the driver's mate. Let's see how this goes round on the track. Okay, let's see if this works. Here we have lights. Okay, we can go forward. Let's just try this. Yes, that runs. No problem. Let's try it back. A little bit more acceleration. Nice smooth takeoff. Let's uh, bring it back to the middle. Just see what the slow running is like. Very slow running. This is on 28 speed step and just the first step. So nice and controlled. And what we are like in the opposite direction. Yes, it can produce a nice crawl. Perfect for coupling locomotives or a moving around on a diesel depot. Okay, let's test it through the points. Um, I'll go, go this way. These are Pico second radius set track points. So every loco should be able to go navigate these without any problem. These are all brand new. So, got a nice controlled speed. And through there with no problem. Let's go back the other way.
Let's bring it back to the centre. Oh, I was going a little bit quick there, had to hit the stop button. And we restarted it and uh, we simply have the guards whistle. Um, anyway, on that note, let's actually listen to what the sounds are. So let's start her up. Let's uh, see how it goes and see how it sounds. Okay, there's something not quite right there. Started moving and then the air brakes released. Does it do that in the opposite direction? Yes. I even released the brakes that time. So what is causing that problem then? I think I need to do a little bit of uh, research on this. Is this a, uh, a fault with the loco? Let me find out. And I'll be right back. Okay, I've uh, come back, I've had a quick look online, and it seems to be quite a common fault apparently. Um, Backman blew uh, the, the chip, the sound chips, um, with the V3.5 sound onto the V4 chips, and it seems to produce this very strange effect. Um, and really, this should have been sent back to the manufacturer to be reblown. A lot of people are saying you need to reblow the chip. Um, but obviously that's more cost. Um, I'm not sure whether I want to do that. Uh, there was a couple of um, suggestions people said. So it was suggested setting CV124 um, and changing that to 24. So I'm going to have a go with that one, just see where we go. So. Um, that's uh, a little bit annoying that it uh, decides to blow the whistle every time you uh, power it up. <laughs> it wasn't doing that earlier. So let me, I'm going to try programming uh, this. Let me, and I think it said one, two, four. Twenty-four. Okay, that is very loud. I'm going to turn the volume down at that as well. Let's see where we are with the sound. Okay, let's put some lights on. Alright, I think I needed to uh, be in a bit more of a sight of the base unit. So, let's just try moving off. And absolutely no difference whatsoever. Oh, 
Okay, there was another suggestion saying set the starting voltage to zero. Um, so what is the starting voltage CV? I just need to find that out. Start voltage is CV2. And that wants to be zero. I wonder if there's a way of disabling the whistle. Okay, they, they do say once you've got this uh, this set, um, you you move it to position one, loco will start to uh, release his brakes and then move it up to the next notch. And that does actually make it a lot more usable. So that's not too bad. Okay. Uh, let's try a couple of the other sounds, let's see what the uh, horns are like. And I think that's it for all the spot sounds, apart from the annoying whistle. Right, I'm going to set this up on the, uh, the test track downstairs and just see how that runs. Okay, let's see how this runs on the, my very temporary layout. I will have a more permanent one in the future.
that all seems to work very nice. Yes, I think um, possibly could do with a reblow on the sound chip, really. So I might look into that and see what prices are available. Um, it seems to look around about fifteen to twenty pound for a reblow, which is quite expensive when you talk about it on top of the price of the loco. So I'll have to have a think. Um, but overall, yeah, a very nice locomotive. Uh, thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.